Hi, I'm Mike Zida, and we're giving you my next talk for my Triple E Computer Column series. And the title of today's talk is The Metaverse is Just a Software Layer. And I share the slides with you here. And there we go. All right. Let's see, got to put on play. Okay, now we're going. All right, everyone. Metaverse is just a software layer. And uh, the outline of today's talk is we're going to talk about the dream of all CEOs is that somehow we have a magical way to build software. And we're going to talk about the metaverse not being dead. It's just being renamed. And we're going to talk about things like uh, Sanos, which is part of the frontier land of the metaverse. And then we'll talk about Tomorrowland, which is where we step carefully and avoid saying metaverse. And then we're into Adventureland. Who can afford to build for Apple's Vision Pro? All right. So the abstract of this talk is the metaverse is now just a software layer. And Neil Stephenson has nothing to say about it. Okay. Fantasyland. The metaverse is now just a software layer. Neil Stephenson has nothing to say about it. The dream of all company CEOs, CFOs, is that somehow some magical thing will be created that diminishes the need for strong programmers. Strong programmers are expensive. There aren't many available, and universities have mostly abandoned project-based courses where programming skills can be exercised and strengthened, and consequently, graduates of those programs have an amazingly difficult time getting positions that require strong programming skills. So many of those CEOs and CFOs are loving the move towards the metaverse as they see it differently than most of us tech people. CEOs and CFOs see the metaverse as a software layer, a layer that hides the complexities of actually programming a game engine, reducing the requirement that the programming engineers have to spend a massive amount of time, not only learning the APIs of the game engine, and even more beyond that. Fantasyland. Maybe the C-Sweeters pronounce C-Sweeters are right, though that maybe we will be better off when the game engine layers are buried beneath another layer that is actually usable by people primarily interested in building an application for their subject matter domain, rather than acting as a deep tester debuggers for the Unreal Engine's intricacies that originated in some historical 1998 code written by programmers either gone or promoted out of coding for a living to something grander like point of the spear aggravats against secure app stores. Or maybe they have even called in rich and have changed their mobile phone's country code so that not even their relatives can find them. And Neil Stephens had nothing to say about all this change as he is perhaps tired of talking about Snow Crash, the metaverse and the origin of the word avatars. Maybe he just wants to stay home for a change and finish that impossibly long trilogy about the writer caught in a Groundhog Day loop in an online world he created in a previous trilogy, now implemented by a college student dropouts or high school dropouts that has become the bad Zoom equivalent of Reddit without any moral bounds. Something to think about. Main Street, USA. The metaverse is not dead it's just being renamed in our last article of the games call mike tried to convince you that the metaverse industry was not dead despite meta's lack of success in sales and game development meta's biggest issue with respect to being a first-rate player in the game console industry is that they haven't sold enough headsets to convince AAA title developers to build games for their platform last news article i saw in meta said 20 million quests were sold Historically, a game console that ha has only sold 20 million units is usually canceled as a failure with respect to games, and game developers usually stop building for it under that number. 20 million is like the Occam's razor number for the will we or won't we build games for this platform. The Nintendo Wii U was canceled with only 13.56 million units sold, for example. And probably I did not convince many of you that because of the innate hardware focus our investment community primarily supported, we ended up with too many choices and not enough sold of the top choices for there to be a viable game industry in the metaverse as hardware defined. But what is the metaverse industry really doing? There is some hardware happening. We all just finished waiting for Apple's announcement and we're trying to pick our jaw off the floor because of its price. At its current price, 
there is no way forward for Apple in the games industry at the price point they're shilling. And of course, Apple showed nearly no game development for the Apple Vision Pro, a horrendously clunky name that no one will remember in five years. The Apple Vision Pro, whatever, may change things dramatically, but there are also companies like Athanos focusing on how do you experience the metaverse without a bulky headset? On the software side, there are game engine companies building that layer above their game engine to hide their engine's complexities. There are metaverse developers building tools for the film production industry, and there are metaverse application companies building apps for brands. So the metaverse is not dead. It's just become this magical software layer for the unlimited pleasure of the C-Sweeties. Frontierland. We don't really need a head-mounted display for the metaverse. So I mentioned Athanos, and I need to say I, that I'm an advisor for Athanos. And the founder of Athanos is Peter Giocaros, the first engineer hired by Oculus. Peter had the opportunity to call in Rich with the Oculus acquisition by Facebook, Neem Meta, and an excellent thing to do in my mind, Peter took the year off after the acquisition and thought about was there a way to build hardware and software support for the metaverse that was somewhat more palatable for users than a bulky headset? Peter's idea was a lightweight pair of DLP, digital light processing glasses, and a lightweight head tracker. Peter even placed another tracker on the display screen in case we could get an iPad-sized screen at something in the future, at some time in the future, that we could move around and tilt like looking through a window into a virtual world. Now, when Athana started, one of the things we needed was a television or monitor that could support stereo display. And unfortunately, the time period for televisions all coming with stereo had long since passed. So an initial, our initial first demos were technically interesting, but utilized an old television that you could tilt if you were strong enough to lift it. Our demos to potential investors with this were clunky, to say the least, and the onset of the COVID work at home era quashed early and quick success. Modern 3D. Uh, so Athanas Peter had to figure out how to get stereo display out of modern televisions. And this is where I greatly appreciate working with a super smart engineer. Peter was able to create a box that sits in the corner of an OLED screen, a box that detects the sync signal and allows the programmer to turn just about any OLED screen into a stereo capable display. I always like this type of one man against the world technology win. It's called Modern 3D by the people at Athanos. See the Athanos website to see what a demo of this all looks like. In figure two, Peter's holding a game controller because Athanos thinks that games ought to be the focus of this path to the metaverse. On his head, he is wearing a lightweight tracker in a stylish headband designed by Tundra Labs and a lightweight pair of DLP glasses. And the demos of the system are quite spectacular and are way nicer than any head hunted display we've ever seen. But that is our opinion because it is our company. Try and get a demo from Athanos. It is very cool and starting and startling. It makes a lot of sense. This is Peter in front of the screen. There is a YouTube video. I will play you the trailer. All right, Tomorrowland, step carefully and avoid saying metaverse. On the 5th of June, 2023, Apple's Tim Cook presented Apple's Vision Pro completely without ever saying the word metaverse. We all immediately thought Appleverse, Goggleverse, or something, some similar form. The Vision Pro seems daunting at first with the amazingly crazy price that starts at 3,499 starts at $3,499. My wife always told me that once you bought the Barbie, 
The next thing you needed was all the outfits in the dream house. She always says computers are kind of like Barbies. Well, I'm sure that once you put a larger memory, the larger flash drive, the extra two hour bat only battery that starts at 3,499 will look like something that would have been a good stopping point. But you gotta have it all if you're gonna go Apple. Let's see if we can justify what's inside this adverse to the metaverse purse. So Apple is using the term spatial computing in an interesting way. Apple has rethought the desktop we are all familiar with and turned it into something we can interact with from the quiet comfort of our sometimes see-through goggles. We have floating 3D panels, tabs that we can hold web pages at good enough resolution so that we can read text 4K each eye, and that's pretty cool. And it looks like we could even play eight movies at a time simultaneously, though I'm not sure for what reason. It lets you navigate simply by using your eyes, hands, and voice. If it's still Siri, we know it's going to be unreasonably bad in the voice domain. So let's just say it's going to have eye and hand interaction capability. And for some Chris speakers, speech recognition that borders on mostly useless. The Vision Pro lets you watch movies that are shorter than two hours, the battery gives you, and lets you squirm around so that the screen also squirms around as you do. Neat. So you can have a completely mobile office attached to your head and you don't have to carry your iMac to Starbucks with you anymore, just an extra battery pack or two. Now, Tim's presentation showed about one game done upright for the Vision Pro and mentioned that things that run on the iPad will run on the VP. Pretty cool. He also mentioned strong collaboration with Unity to get other games onto the platform. But starting at $3,499 is the gamer price for a fully outfitted, high-end NVIDIA card-laden PC, a PC that is plugged into the wall and runs forever unless you are in a PG&E service area. The Vision Pro is a 3D version of Zoom, but again, with flat rounded off video squares that look like live Polaroids that let you show your eyes to people so they know you're watching them from inside Goggle-Rama. And Apple has developed a spatial operating system to carry this all out. So has Apple managed to do anything meaningful with the Vision Pro? Well, they've created a standardized user interface that every app can utilize. If you compare this to the Meta Quest, this is great. On the Quest, each app developer creates their own user interface and a new interface that has to be learned for each app built. So what Apple has done is a good thing, maybe even a great thing. Think different, as they say, or maybe think differently. Now the price, the Apple Vision Pro starting at $3,499 is a ridiculous price, even for a Barbie. Love this picture, see the eyes. References, Ivan Sutherland's The Ultimate Display speech from 1965, whence all of the virtual world stuff came from, the Athanas website, and acknowledgments. I'd like to acknowledge Peter Giacaris for his efforts at Athanas and his engineering brilliance. And the author would also like to thank Apple Computer and Tim Cook in particular for creating something innovative that is neither metaversal nor something already described in a trilogy by Neil Stephenson. If you have any questions, send me email. If you have some hostility and bad comments, don't send me email. There's my website. If you're on WeChat, you can also contact me there. Anyway, have a great day and I'll stop sharing. And we'll see you next time for the next month's column, which is the collision of the film industry with the game technology industry. And it's going to be exciting for you. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.